Hello and welcome once again to what is one of the highest rated podcasts for leisure listening in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That's right. We are the 29th best podcast for leisure listening in Saudi Arabia, according to Chartable.com somehow. This wow. podcast, the Dad and Sons podcast, brought to you by myself, George Weedman, and Liam Edwards, and Matt Visual. And the Hello. keyboard and mouse. And the oh, keyboard God. and mouse. Okay, so... Apparently, there's there's new rules involved. I now have to ask permission to use my keyboard and mouse during the podcast, according to Liam here. And the globe celebrated. Yes. At the announcement so, of a dictatorship falling. So, so before I ever even touch either pieces of equipment, I just I just want to know that I will be complying to the new rules. I will loud and cleanly we'll announce announce my 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 usage. Anyways, anyways, we should have some sort of punishment for when you do. Subconsciously do it. Well, I I, I say money. I'd Money's say money always too. Good. Money is always yeah. good. <laughs> what a good idea, Liam. You know, you know, you know, like a swear jar. Oh you know, my be, god! Yeah, like that, but for typing on a keyboard and mouse when we're recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I might have to go ahead and ask for for my very first usage permission here because for this week i i got us some apple analytics statistics here that i thought we could begin our day by by talking over there's there's some fun factoids in here like how we are the 171st most popular leisure podcast in germany <laughs> Even though we wow. butchered like 8,000 languages worth of intros about six months ago, people still listen to us in non-English speaking. Oh my God, we did do that. We R did remember that. how we're, we're 371st in the United States? Well, we're 171st in Germany, baby. Hail the Germans. I have shared a link with you two on, on the outline. Uh, <gasps> can, can I have permission to click my mouse and copy paste it into the Discord? You just did twice before you asked. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh my fucking god, I didn't even notice my finger on the thing. <laughs> That's two dollars. Okay, okay. Can can <laughs> can I click my mouse right. to, to check on the link and, and see some more Follow fun menu. numbers? Go ahead. Alright, I'm I'm here I'm looking at a new tab. There's there's some great quotes up here. Truly a garbage train wreck. I'm a lot like George as I hate fun and love garbage. So this podcast is simply perfect. <laughs> Says Massimar via Apple's yeah. podcast in Russia. Anyways, <laughs> let's see. Uh, do you guys care about Germany, Brazil, Norway, New Zealand, or Saudi Arabia? Do we care? Like, what yes. kind of question is this? Do we care about yeah. the people who no, live we there? Don't. Or do we <laughs> ge in generally the, the plights, care about the, the countries? Poverty. Yes, the, the the matters of these states. No, how how our podcast has performed in each respective territory. Wait, can we guess which one is? Well, we already know Saudi Arabia is the best performing. Uh, actually, area. yeah, yeah, we are the highest rated among those previous uh, suggestions. Neither none of which was the United States, apparently. But yeah, Saudi Arabia number twenty nine. <laughs> That's that is we the, have too the much highest. competition here. <laughs> Which is weird because I've been drunk on the podcast before, which I'm pretty sure is illegal in <laughs> Saudi Arabia. <laughs> okay, um, can I can I open up a new tab? I gotta open up a new tab of the Saudi Arabia leisure stats. Okay. All right. Take the process slowly. In September 24th, we were only the 132nd best podcast in Saudi Arabia. But over the course of the next week, we jumped up to number three. Holy. Wow. Damn, on, maybe on me being 6th, drunk was like an outlet for people in Saudi Arabia. I, I Well, it didn't last because um, that's really when we peaked in Saudi Arabia. Over, over the next few weeks to the October 18th, our number three ranking declined to 69. Hey. <laughs> but then it bumped up back again to 15 on, on October 19th. So with, with that week's podcast release, we like, we, we really put our shit together and, and got the band back together. And, there you uh, go. Recaptured our lost glory for the 15 people in Saudi Arabia who listened to us. Thank you to the beloved sons and daughters across the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You guys got any... Anything to talk about this week? I believe I, we do, I, actually. <gasps> well, I do want to mention something. Um, okay, so I've never... Played a game. Uh, played... No, that's true. Um, 
I never wore a costume for Halloween. <gasps> except for when I was young. Yeah. Okay. And we used to go to church and they used to dress up dress us up as Bible <laughs> characters. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to rekindle that. I'm wondering huh. if you guys have some ideas. And do you dress up for Halloween? No, not really. But there was a Halloween two years ago. Have I never showed you the photo of me D- dressed? Do I- I uh, have permission to click no. on it. <laughs> no, you can't see it, George. Only Matt. Okay, oh, fine. Okay. I'll just imagine it. So you guys, you guys have, Ooh. you guys have moved to Japan, right? Uh, been to Japan. Sorry, it's not moved to Japan. <laughs> I did that. Yeah, I did moved. that. You guys have both <sighs> been to Japan, so you have been to Family Mart before. Mm, I see the link, but I'm not gonna click it. So, oh, I, I have love seen this. <laughs> I love what is called Fami Chiki here in Japan. You do, you do. I love Fami Chiki. And obviously, like all great Japanese corporate businesses, Family Mart have a mascot called Fami Chiki Senpai. <laughs> which is a mascot that is basically just a giant family chicken. Including being in the packaging and stuff. Is it happy? He He's happy. He has a pet dog and everything. Well, he's going to get eaten. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's a good way to go out. You know, pleasing me in my mouth. Yeah, that is a, an admirable disposition. A, a, a good way to look at life. Well, Just... to to respect old Family Chicken Senpai, I decided to get dressed up as Family Chicken Senpai. <laughs> I'm basically dressed up as a combini family chicken uh, item, full costume and everything. I like the cardboard there that I'm seeing. Do you, do you like? It. Do you like it? This this obviously is an audio presentation, but <laughs> if you could just Google <laughs> Fami Chiki Senpai and the the white and yellow packaging that he comes in with the uh, the Fami Chiki logo on the front of it, that's essentially what I'm what I'm wearing. Matt, can you describe the texture of the cardboard so that I can better fill in my mental image? Yeah, it's um, it's cardboard. <laughs> well, like, are we talking glossy cardboard or, or no. like raw brown moving box cardboard? Like, you just got a box? Like, like Liam just moved and he had leftover box. So whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> just, whoa, whoa, whoa. The cardboard is only for the straps to hold it on my body. Are, are there any stains? Are there any stains on this brown, raw moving box yes. card? Oh, no. What? A couple of yellow stains. What are you talking about? I guess that kind of make the, you know, the whole George, you have together. you have permission to click on the link because I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there's a little oh, red this stain. account is private. I gotta log in and follow it. <laughs> oh no! I'm just gonna have to keep imagining Liam's stained raw cardboard costume. Oh god, yeah. I'm not gonna let you follow me. I'm just gonna <laughs> screenshot it and send it to you because God knows you. That would be terrifying. Do, do you have an Instagram, George? Do I you... don't think so. I don't remember making <laughs> That's those. the appropriate answer. George, That's check, answer check Discord. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see it. <laughs> like who? Oh, yeah. George I... having an Instagram is so weird I'm not... to me. I Yeah. White I and never yellow stains all over that cardboard. Gotcha. This yeah. is disparaging. Disparaging <laughs> comments for what took me all of like a week to make. I've that never made a costume in my life. Week. Does that say I am chicken? Like, yeah. Just, just to clarify. Yeah, because that's literally what the packaging says. <laughs> that's it's adorable. very Japanglish. See, see, Liam, I, you know, you're blocking most of your body there. Yeah, because I'm. I'm, I'm going the, to a party. I'm. I'm the There's chicken. not much you can. <laughs> It's just I'm kind of in like the in the okay. Do I do I have permission to right click and save as and put this on my desktop? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, there we go. I it's it's gonna be with me for a little while now. I'll let you know the next look, time I click look, on it. The text on it, the fancy like font, was all cardboard cutout fonts that I meticulously traced out size and then cut out and then had to place on the paper 
to get it right. Look, I'm like a half open piece of chicken. It's great. My shirt's even like a orangey brown. The resemblance the, is uncanny. The texture of the chicken. I cannot tell the difference between a crispy brown piece and the yellow stains you might you may or may not be seeing <laughs> are just grease. It's just it's just chicken grease. Now that's what I like to call all white meat. Oh uh. Oh <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> Can I quit? <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm clicking back to the outline tab. Come on, come on. Everyone likes some breasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a lot of breasts, that's for sure. So, uh... <laughs> so no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. We, well, we're trying to find Matt a costume, because, George, oh, you yeah, obviously right. never dressed up in your life. All right. Okay, I, okay, I, so... no, I've actually done a few. I've done a few dress-up days. <laughs> dress up days and then you yeah, put okay. clothes on um <laughs> shut the hell up God d although thinking back on it like the past few years I don't think are necessarily gonna like look the best on me um for last Halloween I was uh me and me and the girlfriend were, were Velma and Shaggy Where, do you have a picture of you uh it's Shaggy? on my phone oh am I allowed to click on my phone yeah, because it touches. Yes. Don't make any noise. Oh my god, this might be a great loophole, actually. It's fine by us. Yeah, okay. we don't care if it's. Pull a up loophole. Google Docs on your phone and never type again. Yeah, that's what I do. I, I necessity is the mother of invention. Who knows if I ever would have thought of this had the rule not been imposed. <laughs> oh god, are we really getting deep into this right now? <laughs> <laughs> Send us the picture. I, I'm talking about scrolling the world. down. It's from a whole year ago. There's a lot of pictures between now and then. And I was going to talk in the meantime to, to fill the time by talking about internet celebrities. You can dress up as internet celebrities. The kids love them. They're like funny costumes. I don't know. For a couple dragon internet cons. Internet celebrities? Matt. You mean I could be George Weedman? You, yeah, I was going to say you could be Super Bunny off of Halloween. You could, you could <laughs> cosplay as PewDiePie. Yeah. So all my friends will be like... Who are you? I am I'm, I'm George Weedman, Super Bunny Hop, you know, from, from YouTube. <laughs> and they'll be like, what? <laughs> I do have a weed cigar. Are you guys familiar with Red Letter Media where where they do the half yes. in the bag reviews with the VCR repair? Half in the bag. Half in the bag. Yes, you did do a, a I remember that. One. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, yeah. I make costumes sometimes. I you just, remember that one. You just uh wow, you actually dressed up as an internet personality. And a friend of mine, and we were both of them. You yeah, you get I... like a work shirt, you custom order a, a specialized badge with, with the logo on it, and then you just talk really deadpan about movies. So, <laughs> so I was all right, all right. So I was thinking at first, I was like, okay, so a lot of people call me Black Harry Potter because it's a glass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, right, I, and I, I was can just like, where this is going. "You are too buff to be." Yeah. <laughs> no, and then I was going around. I was like, "All right," I was looking around in the the costumes, and it's like forty dollars for just a jacket. So I still have to get like the sweater, the everything and I was just like, "Man, I'm gonna spend like a hundred dollars just to be a white character." Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> I don't know. But I was talking to to my friends and she was like, she's like, you sure you want to be this? And I was like, you know, I could be like a black version, like, like, you know, black, hairy pothead, you know, that's what yeah. I was thinking. And then like, ha and she was like, oh, a big bag of gillyweed, right? What? Gilly, gillyweed, the, you, you know, the. It's just, that's what's called. It makes you breathe underwater. Gilly, gilly. Oh, that's that's what it does. Oh God, you you guys haven't watched. Oh, I know I know what it is. I'm just and listening then... to George try and trying to remember <laughs> anything about Harry Potter, which well, he inevitably yeah, I, has forgotten everything about. I read the first book. I don't I don't remember Gillyweed. You read one book and never saw the movies. You don't know anything about Harry Potter. I was in the <laughs> fifth grade when I read the book and I t t made out through most of the movies. And, wait what wait, whoa okay we're gonna unpack that later and and then my 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 wand can be my vape pen I just, I just saw the photo of george's shaggy 
His smile. His smile. It looks a little like dead inside. The wig. Yeah. The wig is so good. The wig is killing me. The wig it's... was called Seventies Guy on on you the look bag. Like, you look like some sort of like serial killer's last photo before being arrested for murder. I I don't know how you fake that type of smile, George. You must. <laughs> you don't. It's all raw emotional energy, baby. <laughs> If I didn't know you and I saw that, that was the first photo I saw of you, I would think you're like one of those creepy serial killer guys. Why would you? For sure. From a photo of me is a bad shaggy at a Halloween party? <laughs> it's like, okay, the girl looks happy enough, but the guy, you look like you sleep with an anime pillow. Dude. <laughs> oh my, how, how, how do you make that elaborate backstory? Out when of it, such small amount of information. It's the smile. It's the smile. I mean, obviously you don't. Right, I mean, obviously. <laughs> I, no, okay. And I know how, how to end any thoughts on that. Can you imagine me spending any money on an anime pillow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> like, I think, like, like maybe a little. <laughs> Wow, you know Liam how frugal you I am. I don't even buy video games. You do buy garbage though. <laughs> and anime actually, pillow come is to garbage. Think of it, I did buy a video game this week to talk about it on the podcast. And oh, look at, really? look at how well that's going. Oh, instead well, we're oh. talking about my serial killer hair that isn't even mine. It was a wig. It was a '70s guy wig. All right, Liam, what do you think about the Kigurumi? Uh, a onesie. Uh, it's called a Kigurumi, right? A Kiga right? Rumi. Well, a onesie. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. what it's called? Well, like, I only know onesie. What, the, other, the other thing you said to me was like a magical spell. I don't know what you just said. Kiga Rumi? Kiga Rumi. It's a very distinctive style of onesie, as, as far as I have heard the term utilized in the yeah. West. Oh, like, oh, like the, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the female <laughs> sort of cute animal... Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, how do you not know? How do you not know? Because I is? call them onesies. In Japan, you call them onesies? You just walk up to a Japanese I person? I didn't know what they were called in Japan. <laughs> I didn't think it was different. In Japan, wait, they wait, might wait, just wait. You can't. You're always talking about Japan stuff, and now you're like, oh, no, I don't know what they're called in Japan. <laughs> i'm so no, sorry i didn't know what the word for now. a very specific type of onesie was <laughs> fucking shove your kigurumi up your ass is it bad to be comfortable on halloween no because i just no. saw one that is a Cth an adult cthulhu one that is what i think you should wear cthulhu a cthulhu kigurumi i, I need it i'm gonna try and send you the link Halloween is 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 all about getting as as weird and comfy as oh, society yeah. will oh, allow. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great night. And I oh my god, what is that? Is it like Squidward blue? Squidward <laughs> blue, right? <laughs> oh god, let me see. It does look a little like a. It really is that. Bad uh, <laughs> that is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> you should absolutely wear that. People need to start like you need to have an accompanying phone with this episode because it is the worst audio feature of all time. Imagine <laughs> tentacles out of your face like Cthulhu, but made of wool. Yeah, or polyester. Depends how cheap your onesie is. I'm gonna I'm gonna get one today. Well, there's an Evangelion one after this podcast. Well, I don't know about Cthulhu because that just looks. No one's gonna get that. It looks a little. No, uh, nobody's nobody's gonna get laid in that. Looks a little suspicious. Well, what, do you, what are you? What are you saying? There's buttons in the front. Uh, yeah, but a lot of tentacles in the back. <laughs> 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 what type of one are you gonna wait, go wait, for? Wait, wait, wait! You're talking about you're talking about that, and then you, you just sent us the fammy chicky. <laughs> Okay, that nothing's going on. on hey, that, which I, is I my original like point. About I will thing. beg to differ. The Cthulhu one is something that I wouldn't be half surprised even to grind see, like on, that. like, on security camera footage. Like, <laughs> your identity is is hidden behind that thing, but it looks like you could still see and talk out of it well. If there was a oh, police lineup of 
me in a Femi Chicky outfit, <laughs> Matt dressed as like Harry Potter dope head, and <laughs> a man in a Cthulhu Kigurumi onesie, and then George dressed as Shaggy, George would be the one who'd get arrested. How, I don't... What, what did I do to, to deserve this suspicion? That That smile... Okay. You, need to share, you need to share this photo preemptively on Twitter with people so they can prepare themselves. <laughs> well, then I gotta <laughs> ask permission from the other person in the photo. <laughs> oh, you no, can that, always that, crop. That permission. You can always crop that per <laughs> and zoom in more on the smile. Yes, yes, zoom in. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm not in high school anymore, guys. <laughs> we should talk about video games on our video game podcast that, that we make together as adults who don't oh. who don't crop people out of their <sighs> their their photographs. Oh. It's only a week away. What is he gonna do? Hmm. Well, I'm <laughs> I I am going to be lazy. I could be put on a Netflix shirt, and I brought a lot of ice to the last house party, so I could be the <laughs> next Netflix and chill guy. <laughs> And you have like 8,000 condoms as well. <laughs> you stop throwing I, them out I to like all the, the good boys and girls. Of, of, of safe everyone. sex, safe you sex, safe know, sex. You know when you're going to a party and there's like some pressure sometimes to bring wine or a snack or a casserole dish and Matt's bringing ice? <laughs> I brought a lot of ice last time, okay? It's helpful. I, it's useful. It's I, useful, I would not man. complain, yeah, for a party. You, you want lots of ice. I don't think I would complain at either of the weird options you just mentioned. Either the ice, which to be fair is pretty standard, or the casserole dish that you uh, <laughs> seem to be bringing along as well. What's wrong with bringing food to the Halloween parties that you go to? With uh, can you imagine? Can you imagine if we week? had a dad and son's Halloween party? I could. It, I, I like to imagine. Yeah, that's a good mental image. Yeah, that, that would, would be. Bonkers. That would be bonkers. How likely <laughs> all of our like, Saudi Arabia oh, no. <laughs> sons and daughters come over for the party? No, you guys have to be 21 and older. Maybe, maybe, maybe older than that. Let's well, we could go to the UK and then you only have to be 18. We're playing drinking games, baby. <laughs> for the, the 180th most popular podcast in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we would take it to our 39th home in Saudi Arabia, but I think... Half of us would get arrested for what we plan on doing. I I played a game this week. Oh, what is <sighs> Bringing it? Bringing the tone down. God, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I I don't know where to where to go or what to do from here on out. Besides that, it's well, you could take us to the disco. You know, Matt. I could I could easily imagine you doing a kind of like disco stew thing. Bell bottoms, <laughs> a studded white leather jacket with a big afro with some sprinkles, like sprinkly, shiny I, texture in I, the hair. Hmm. Hmm, George. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that would fit me more than Harry Potter, right? Yeah, yeah. So, because that's mainly, mainly black people. Wait, well, how, did, how did you come to that? <laughs> I was thinking of John Travolta from, from Saturday Night Fever. That's... Yeah, it's so, not. I'll dress up as a Soul Chain character, just for you, George. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, is wait, wait, no, the, George. We haven't called you racist in a while. I think it was. About you're, time. you're basically going down the list at this point of like <laughs> things to do, <laughs> things to fuck around with George on on yes. any given episode of of <laughs> this thirty ninth most popular in Saudi Arabia <laughs> podcast, the Dad and Sons <laughs> podcast. Um, <laughs> God fucking Liam, can I type in the timestamp for changing the topics now? <laughs> I guess so. No. Good, good job on oh, uh, yeah, asking awesome. for permission. Or oh, what a cool, what a cool new rule. Uh, let's see, twenty-seven minutes, fifty-three, almost to twenty-eight minutes. No, don't, We're don't announce it. To, to, no, don't announce the time because inevitably everybody will be like, wait a second. It's 24 minutes and 58 <laughs> seconds. What were they talking about for four minutes? <laughs> that got cut out of the show. What? what I'll let you in on a secret. This is the episode that brings the us up to number one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because you didn't click. 
Uh, okay, there. I've I've finished typing in the timestamp with which to denote the topical change from discussion on Matt's Halloween costumetry to uh, me trying out a cool new video game called Disco Elysium, which I had actually made a timer for to see how long it would take you before that came up. Mm. Yeah, like That's a week bad. ago, we we finished talking on this very podcast, and I clicked with my mouse and tack tack tacked with my keyboard to to twitter and saw this uh game being very very heavily praised by people's whose opinions i trust and follow um remember barry barry apparently really liked it i actually watched barry stream the first two hours of this game and it was quite enjoyable to hear barry do lots of different voices based on the different thought processes of the main character's brain that was Dis- really cool Disco Elysium is a game that uses game math to gamify the internal conversations you have with yourself. It's a uh, very, very text-heavy, isometric CRPG done in the style of Planescape Torment. Um, Matt, you probably wouldn't like it. You were, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you you typed in some messages about how it. Uh, Looks a little um, um, wordy like and pretentious. Pillars? Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. very much in the transition of pillars. You're doing about as much reading as you are most anything else, especially because this is a game where all the combat encounters are text based. I know neither of you, but I don't know if anyone listening got to the ship to ship combat in Pillars of Eternity too. It was just all rolling the dices through textual descriptions of of what's happening when you roll the dices. But that's how it works here too. But I'm like digging it. One of the things that we have talked about before is how much non-combat interaction you can do with the pen and paper RPG in real life versus playing one in the game that devolves a lot of combat down to clicking on bad guys whose lives are worth nothing, who throw themselves away in suicidal combat encounters. Whereas when you have that DM in real life explaining things, they can make games out of all sorts of non-combat interactions with the world, like being a detective, but having to fight the urge to to vomit when inspecting the body, right? That's like the first big quest in this game is is getting over some physiological, psychological urges inside of your character's head, which which is is acted out in dialogue by by alternate characters. Like you'll have internal conversations with your skills. You'll, you'll have an internal conversation with your visual calculus skill to deduce the the evidence in a crime scene and then check whether or not you can actually talk about it with your partner with your social skills, which are a totally different set of things in the uh, the the text they have written in the I heard a mouse click. Out. God fucking ah! Oh, it's a nervous tick at this point. I can barely help that's, it. That's three dollars. Okay. Um. I. Sh- I pff, pff, n- now mini. my whole train of thought is just derailed. So just like Disco Elysium. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Disco Elysium. I like the game style. I like the game's attitude. I like the art. It. It doesn't have uh, like pre-rendered the art looking does backgrounds, look but beautiful and grotesque at the same time. They look like pre-rendered backgrounds until you zoom in, and then it looks more like an oil painting. It's interesting. It reminds me. It reminds me of like D- Dishonored's concept art stuff. Yeah. Like 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 solid. Uh, wispy oily solid colors of of like north atlantic kind of french noir towns. style oil paintings it does look very nice but disgusting at the same time grimy but but nice but yeah writing and the humor are are the things that that have me giggling and and really intrigued to see what happens next it's like if kingdom of loathing had really really solid production values a completely cynical sarcastic self-aware take on the rpg genre but done with enough of a budget to actually build an interesting and exciting world that you can you can also get lost in like it takes place in a semi-modern setting this is a pin clicking by the way not the mouse i was gonna say sounds like a keyboard it it was described in the game steam forums by the developers as taking place in the 1950s of another world but it also doesn't look like Fallout. There's a lot more color to it. It's an interesting setting that you don't see much too. 
Yeah, I was watching Barry's stream and there was like the money is like reals and then from like Brazil and it has like Eastern European feel to it. But then there is a lot of like Finnish language in it and stuff like this. Like it's a it's definitely like a, a an amalgamation of a lot of different cultures <laughs> into one uh, just to throw you off. The developer is is just like wacky as hell to describe and, and say Z-A slash U-M is the name. And they describe themselves less as a company than they do an international collective art movement with like 50 members <laughs> oh total, but God. six permanent members who who held the direction for this game project that got released and sold. And Good uh, on them. I, I was talking to a friend about this the other day because I haven't actually played it. I have only watched Barry play it and obviously all the reviews. But I was thinking about all of the different skills and how each skill doesn't just interact with the game, but it also completely changes what text boxes appear and all that kind of stuff. Like what actually, like logs of text happen? Yes. And then there's what? There's like 10 thought processes for like each skill or something like that or you each... have you have it's like five, D &D, though. five yeah it, it, it is D, &D. It's... but D, D doesn't have preset text that's written by somebody well, yeah this is like gamified D, &D. and yeah also... but my point my point is how complicated from a like a from a dev point how hard that must have been for them to keep track mm. of like everything because like if you pick one skill over the other then that skill has to interact with all the other skills you've chosen and then vice versa as as every character the thing is the skills have voices and personalities and those are informed by how many points you put in the skill this is insane like like your your skill for i don't know deception could just totally straight up lie to you and end up walking you into a conversation tree where you screw okay so you don't just like if you're trying to lie to someone in this game you're going to have to do it through three different skills that are all going to interact with one another based on how many points you've invested in order to make a a fun conversation that makes the encounter make sense it's it's really different built more like a visual novel actually i'd bet than, than a traditional RPG system. But you're having fun. Yes, yes, I, I, I am having fun. I'm like uh, two to four hours in, greatly, greatly oh. looking forward to Oh, fuck, I'm clicking. That's $4. Four hours in. Whew. Uh, that's, that's not bad for George, right? Two to four hours before he quits? Well, I, I got some other games too. Wait, wait, wait. Is it, are they they're another new game? <gasps> oh, let's talk about that first one. Hmm. Unless Liam, have you been playing? Yeah. I've I've played one game this week, other than other than a dabble into Destiny and trying to continually find time to at least to have some fun with that, which is becoming quite hard at the moment. But I I did play one game and I finished it because it was only two hours long, which that was sounds perfect. like my kind of Steam. It was a game. It was a small game called A Short Hike. What an mm. apt description! It is exactly what it says on the tin. But I loved it. I, I looked this up. Absolutely loved it. It looks adorable. It's only like eight bucks. It is adorable to start. It's like it's like low poly PS One era aesthetic, but obviously done a lot better than PlayStation ever did it. Like it's like low poly, low fi, three D models, but everything's pretty crisp and pure, and it's very beautifully rendered color wise, and everything looks fantastic in it. But it is it wears like its Animal Crossing inspirations on its sleeve. So all of the characters are like small, cute foxes and penguins and birds and crocodiles and all this kind of stuff. And they're very Animal Crossing and they talk like Animal Crossing characters all with like doo -doo 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 -doo, and all like different voices like that. And the music is amazing. It's like Animal Crossing music. But if it was slightly better, I don't know. If you know what I mean by that, like Animal Crossing music's not bad, but it has to be like a certain, you know, repetition because of how much you play Animal Crossing. Yes. Whereas this is a short game that depending on where you are in the in the islands that you're on in the game, uh, the music changes depending on the environment you're in. So you you don't hear a track for too long, 
which means it can have its like high and low moments and also build up to like crescendos and stuff without you know overwhelming the player over a period of time it's really good if you're not going to play the game at least listen to the soundtrack it will chill you out so the aim of the game is basically you just arrived on this tiny island uh with your park ranger aunt, and you're this tiny little penguin no. adorable adorable bird you're like just a bird that can glide you can you can double jump and then glide and then you're just set off and then you just walk around this island that has all these little animals that are doing stuff and you're just trying to get to the top of the uh the island peak so you can get cell phone reception so I wonder when the decision was made to go with low poly PS1 style aesthetics or with um like blobby animal exaggerated stylized characters because they I work think really it, well for the yeah art they style. work really well and everything's really identifiable and the characters look great and they're very distinctive color wise because you know you're going to be flying and gliding so you need to be able to notice them from a distance if you're trying to go back to them and like deliver something to them or get something from them. So the whole game only takes about two hours, and that's if you explore and do stuff. You could probably reach the summit of the island within 10 minutes if you, you know, try hard enough. The whole point is to go around and just help people a little bit and talk to the other people in the island so you can get what's called golden feathers, which gives you another jump to your double jump. So you can then climb higher and fly higher so you can get to the top of the summit. So basically you're just... Going around, talking to people, helping them out so you can basically eventually get to the summit. And it only takes about two hours, but it is amazing. It's such a lovely delight. It's incredibly well written. Every character is like, you know, like weirdly normal in a kind of undertale way, you know, witty, but realistic speech. Huh. Yeah. Not video game dialogue at all. Like very normal dialogue but very well written and witty it's really entertaining to actually talk to some characters and i am not really one for being that interested in that kind of thing but i actually mm. did find a lot of the time it was quite enjoyable and there's this one moment where you go you accidentally stumble across like this moose who's fishing and he says he'll teach you how to fish and you just sit down with him and then the game locks you into the fishing bit and uh, the character's like, so uh, what do I do? And the moose is like, you just wait. And the game just sits there still and you can't do anything. And you can't press anything. And the character's like, uh, <laughs> no, really, what do I do? And he's like, you just wait. And, it, and there's like this whole three minute segment where it won't it won't let you get out of this bit about fishing. It's just so quirky. Wait, wait, weird how, like how long? It's a, it's probably about three minutes, but it has pieces oh, okay. where you actually catch a fish and all that kind of stuff. So it's not too oh, bad. But it's just the sort of tone of the game. But the one thing I do want to say about the game, and I don't want to say too much about it because I think it obviously it's only two hours long, so you should play it for yourself is that the island that the game takes place is this one single level. It's like an interconnect. If you think like Donkey Kong Country, uh, no, Donkey Kong 64, Banjo-Kazooie, you know those big open extended levels? Yeah. Or even Super Mario 64, right? But imagine that as like a big mountain that has various plateaus that you can glide from, all these little nooks and crannies that you can go under it's kind of like a big diorama because you're looking down at it from kind of top view down and it's so interconnected and the, the it's like you're moving around at 360 because you can't move the camera it's fixed camera that changes angle depending on where you move in the island so there are always things obscured out of your view unless you sort of take a leap of faith and fly across like a gap or something the whole island is hugely interconnected in such a smart and amazing way with like measured jumps and gliding distances if you've got a certain amount of double jumps. Just, it's so wonderful to explore that island. It's so smartly designed. I honestly, you know how, like it sounds good, it's gonna sound like a really weird comparison, but you know how everybody talks about Dark Souls being so interconnected? I like was you'll go trying through so hard not to say it. I know, but I can't think of anything in games that is similar because levels, for the most part, st have a start 
and then they have an end. So, like you move linearly f- through them. It's the 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 plate of spaghetti. Yeah, maybe even like you know Resident <laughs> Evil 2's mansion, but even then there are parts that are blocked off. There's nothing blocked off on the island. Like if you have the uh, required feather or, or not required, but because you can cheat the game, the game allows you to actually just bypass stuff all the time. It doesn't want to stop you from doing stuff. So there's always another option to go around a mountain or something like that. But everything's super interconnected and you'll fly one way and then you'll slip off at the mountain and then you'll fall back to like a, a area you were like 10 minutes ago and you're like, oh, okay, so this this is here and this, oh, this part must be above this and all that kind of stuff because there's no map. It just gives you a compass about where north is. And so everything else you just sort of piece together in your head. And it, it's wonderful. I'm so surprised because it's not usually the type of game I would enjoy, apart from it being two hours, which is great because it means I've actually finished a game this year. Wow. Has that been the first well, one? Well, and Sekiro. No, Sekiro as well. <laughs> and f- wait, did I finish Fire Emblem? Yeah, I thought Oof. I think I finished Fire Emblem. Wow. wow. All right. All right. All right. But no, I'm really impressed by it. And it's like made by a really small team, like one dude who just makes like itch.io games. I don't know. I just really thought it was quite a wonderful experience. It's if, you know, it's super cheap already, but if it goes on sale at some point on Steam, I would, I don't think you would feel like you wasted your money. So you is it seven or eight bucks? Uh, I, d- I can't remember. I don't know, actually. Oh, God. Oh God, I, I I clicked. It's eight bucks. So now you clicked. That's five bucks in. So you're you're three bucks away from buying a short hike. Right. Okay. Uh cool. It's adorable. Like if you like Animal Crossing or you like uh, you know, small piece games like that don't take that long. They maybe journey ish. It's not like 80 hours of the same repetitive activity with like menus designed to goad you into it and bring your friends along. Even though you'll maybe backtrack sometimes because you'll fly back to an area to meet somebody, you're constantly meeting new characters right up until the end. And then you get to the end of the game and it just ends and it's that's it and you never need to go back unless you want to feel it again but it's great it's awesome <laughs> i like when games just end and i don't have to think about them ever again i i i miss those days a short hike cool game that's that's like the opposite of of, of what's big and expensive matt what 90 hour rpg have you finished this week nothing really at all because everything kind of sucks right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you know, there's what's good out there right now. Like I, I disco sounds like something I could get into, but I mean, I when it comes down to just reading, just like that type of like dialogue, I'm just, <laughs> I just, I just get tired. Just, just looking at it, reading. No, wait, you it's you just said I play 90 hour RPGs. They're all reading. Final I Fantasies, know. they're all reading. It has nothing to do with the reading. It has a type of reading. It's like It's so funny you say Matt, because you know you were talking about Indivisible last week. Yeah. What about So it? I started I started playing Indivisible, like the first hour. Yeah. Super gave up because there was so much text. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all ready to start, like the hype intro animation and everything got me, all that kind of stuff. And then, oh my God, the text would not stop. And it, it the text it, would not stop. Okay, so was it because you didn't enjoy what they were saying? Maybe, maybe. It was not a case of like, you know, video game text, be, like Disco Elysium, obviously, is a game all about text, but that it means that the game is text. crafted. Yeah, the game is crafted to that, right? I actually... Indivisible looks like it has a really fun combat system. It's like, you know, Valkyrie Profile. That kind of style. And I'm interested in that. But man, before I was able to actually like... Apart from the intro where it's kind of like a faux fake final battle type thing. It just... It was just reading. Yeah. Reading. Reading. Like reading not good stuff. Like reading cliche RPG stuff. Like Father... Why won't you tell me the secrets yeah, of my mother? I told you, dude. 
I yeah. told you. It's I will probably get through just so I can see like the combat and get a bit more into it and stuff. But yeah, definitely bounced off hard the first hour. I, I just want to point out and clarify that based on Disco Elysium style and vibe, whenever it does an exposition dump on you with a bunch of jargon that that has weird words that you're probably not going to understand. There usually is a dialogue option in response to it. That is your character just being like, wait, wait, hold up a minute. What actually am I reading here? What even is this bullshit? And then your character will launch into an internal dialogue against his encyclopedia skill that will explain <laughs> what the jargon and bullshit actually mean. Yeah. That just sounds like a waste of time. That's it. Just you're just gonna end it a waste of time. You're not gonna elaborate. Just okay. I do not want to have a dictionary by me while I play a game. But the okay? dictionary gets to argue with you. <laughs> I and don't do commentary. I don't. It's just like okay, we're getting into politics now. Let me just open up the dictionary. Oh, flap. there's so many politics in this game. I know. I know. <laughs> and that's where I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Like give me give me House of Cards. I'll, I'll, I'll digest that. See, like stuff like that, I could get into. <laughs> but when it comes down to just going, I don't know, you're mixing politics with philosophy and and all of that, and then their own little weird style. Like Jonathan Blow is writing their their text. It's it's just weird, man. It's just it's just too much. I I probably if I gave it time, I could probably get into it. But I have to be in the mood. Those are the type of games you have to be in the mood to sit down with a cup of coffee and just kind of learn and fumble through the first five hours to really get a sense of what you're doing. Got to clear clear some stress from your head, you know, finish yeah. all your obligations, turn the phone off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make That's sure not a game no, I can no just deadlines like. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> I have to have like a free weekend to really get into that game. You can't just like play that on the side. Yeah. No. So, so you you got you got any any games or movies or or should we move on to to me ranting about uh, Hollow Knight? Netflix so chill, good place, pretty good. But uh, I did play a ROM hack, um, which is weird for me. That's a video game. ROM hack is a video that game. Is weird for you. Yeah. Decided to try something a little bit new. Uh, the Pokemon ROM hack, Pokemon Glazed, <laughs> and <laughs> excuse me, Dad. <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, oh, I'll play it, I'll play it. I never try one of these. Wait, wait, hold on. Is this, is this going to be porn? No, no. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's actually a pretty good porn name, yeah. Glaze. And you know, there are some ROM hacks out there that are just like all sprites replaced with titty versions. But that's dumb. Yeah, this... right? Who would do that? Dummies? <laughs> it's, it's pixels, guys. <laughs> This is just All like right, the so Pokemon there, sprites are so low poly. You're, you're playing Pokemon glazed, getting ready to glaze everyone up <laughs> on on your illicit, unauthorized ROM hack version. And I didn't notice that ROM hacks are so tiny. I I was like, man, oh, yeah, because when you ROMs. play the game, you, you play the game, it's like this whole different game, completely different, Not really. completely different. Yeah, own story, own text. It's it's weird, and then you just, it's just like this little patch that you put on the ROM this is to make it that way. That is that's incredible. Maybe I'm missing something here, but that's like wow. Okay, that, so what, what is what, it, what, what is Pokemon Glazed? I still don't think you've described how non-pornographic it is yet. And you, you instead of like how Emerald is, because uh, it's Pokemon Emerald but hacked. Um, you start off in this like other town completely different from arriving in your like um for some reason in in emerald you're like in the moving van you remember that one <laughs> and for some reason you're in the back of the van where all your moving um oh yeah, yeah. Is this oh, yeah. GBA one? you arrive at your new GBA. house yeah yeah but you're not yeah. there you're like in your house that has like your own um you have your own room upstairs that you don't have to go through the front door to get to it's really really interesting uh, and then there's this guy who's like teleporting you from like different planes, which is Wait, it wasn't explained to me yet. And then what? you get to choose from five Pokemon instead of three, which is cool. And the game is ex 
like a lot harder. <laughs> it is not easy. So they don't give you spots to train as much. Is is it's like Pokemon Hardcore for serious gamers? Yeah, I guess so. Hard dude. mode Pokemon. Like I for some re- um from what I've looked up, a lot of the ROM hacks are like that. So they just kind of bump up the levels. So you kind of have to grind sometimes, and I don't know if I like that. Because they don't really give you good spots to actually grind. So this is this sounds like it's for people like Jimmy, like really hardcore Pokemon people. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I think you can play the game, but if you're expecting something with no challenge, this is not the game for you. This will challenge you. There's no way you can just you know fight the trainers, fight whatever random people come up to you, random Pokemon come up to you. And then get through the game. No, you're going to hit that that nice wall and you're going to be like, oh, OK, I'm going to have to train a little bit. Yeah, you're going to have to train a little bit. But it, it is like more Pokemon around. It's cool. It's cool. And the story is very it was from like the first, what, two hours that I played of it. Story is pretty interesting. It has you intrigued. It has you going to like the next next place and wanting you to to grind and you could also also speed up the ROM hack, so you can kind of grind pretty fast if you just like hold the trigger, and just like constantly press quick attack, quick attack, quick attack, and then level up your your Pokemon. Um, which I feel like if I could break the game, it doesn't make me feel really good about playing it. What's the the companion alternate version for Pokemon Glaze? Like, like what shows up next to it in the store on the shelf? Like you know, is red blue. Uh uh d- d- double x and double y um, um sword and shield is coming out what do you mean you, there, it, pokemon glazed the the companion version is it like pokemon sprinkled or oh or pokemon <laughs> chocolate dipped chocolate dipped would probably or be it pokemon what, what what's like a word that describes like a powdered sugar covering yeah because i feel like that's the opposite of glazed you know a powdered? glaze is Pokemon, Pokemon powdered powdered, po- powdered Pokemon. Pokemon versus glazed? Yeah, no, p- Pokemon powdered would still roll off the tongue. Still, yeah, uh, that 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 would be better. Uh, Pokemon, mm. <laughs> Pokemon white dust. Pokemon caramelized. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> glazed. I don't even know how you came up with that. Glazed. But yeah, yeah. But that, that's it. That's it. It, it, it. it doesn't deserve any more <laughs> time than that. It, it's a cool game. It's a cool game. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it because it's, it's a little bit too much grind. Even though the story is pretty interesting. How would you feel if if I started playing a game you've been wanting to, me to play for a long time? But I know what it is. Oh um, yeah. But but what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, how would uh, you know? Hypothetically speaking, not that it would ever happen because I don't think it will. But how would you feel if I started playing Hollow Knight, but as the weeks rolled on, ended up not finishing it? I feel like you've just broken his heart. What would that do? do you, okay, so you know, my heart is already broken into pieces. Liam. I'm not. I'm not saying it's gonna happen because that's true. Because it's uh, it's pretty pretty good. Like, really got me sucked in. Um, How many hours? More than disco? I want to say three to four. More more than disco. I actually played more Hollow Knight and Destiny over the weekend than than disco. Um, Hollow Knight. I have been playing on the treadmill and a couple settings on the big TV. It's yeah. I don't know if there's much I can say that people haven't until I get to the switch stuff. It's like really cute. I've never played a game that has like cute bug people in it. I've never like outside of, of, I guess some bug Pokemon, you don't see a lot of bugs becoming cute in video game art that, that often. And this is like a whole game of cute bugs. Yeah. How do you like the music and the, the sounds of the bugs. The the music and the, and the sounds goes. when I'm wearing headphones on the TV are great. <laughs> but <laughs> but well, I also um uh, appreciate a lot of the level design tricks it's doing. You definitely notice that thing where you preview areas and enemies before they actually throw you at them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a real solid sense of atmosphere. Like I said, totally got me sucked in. It's immersive. Uh, how okay? So yeah, switch stuff. This is, I think, the first Switch port I've played that doesn't become super duper fantastic in portable mode. I want to play through more of it on um, 
the TV instead because I I don't Liam did you play through Hollow Knight? Uh, I didn't finish it. <laughs> I do you remember wow. a hidden door on the left of a shaft that gets you to the forest level? I remember being stuck on something. Ah, I remember talking about it on the podcast with Matt. Ah, and Matt was talking about some double jump that I didn't have at the time. Oh, oh my God! It's you can totally tell there's going to be a double jump later on. I got an air dash and a wall jump, but there's totally going to be a double jump later on, isn't there? Can you really think of a game that doesn't have double jump? Uh, Dark like, Souls. It, it's like ha- not having wall jump in the game. Like, it just feels weird. Oh, it's God. so common. Oh, God, I'm really fighting suppressing the urge to run off to the bathroom. So, okay. Anyways, text is... <laughs> oh, my God. Text is, what the hell okay, is wrong Hollow Knight with you? is a great game. I'm playing through the Switch port. The text is a little small. Um, um, th- there's really? like... Yeah, little v- visual cues I'm missing. It's a freaking beautiful game. Like, I didn't notice how much depth parallax scrolling there was going on until I blew it up to a TV. <gasps> also, you guys know how when your Switch screen gets really small and you see yourself reflected in it? Hollow Knight is a very dark game. The reflection from the glare of the screen can obscure some... He's just shaggy looking back. Ah! <laughs> Game for PlayStation 2 Raves USA Today. Right, get out of here. And Game Informer names Metal Gear Solid 2 Game of the Year. I've been waiting for this. Metal Gear Solid 2, only on PlayStation 2. Rated M for Mature, from Konami. Do, 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 do. This just in, a late breaking news report has been submitted to the Dad and Sons editorial desk during the break, because apparently this literally happened one hour ago. Um, yeah. yeah, there's d- depressing, shitty Chinese news that's follow up to last week that we we're going to talk about. We're throwing all that away to instead yes. talk about Bethesda announcing a $12 a month <laughs> subscription service for Fallout 76, baby! Because if we're <laughs> never talking about China, then we're always going to be talking about Randy Pitchford, and if we're never talking about that, we're probably going to be talking about Fallout 76. I'm glad that we at least got down to the fun one. I can't... Yes. I'm I'm happy to say that we actually did not report on the previous Bethesda Fallout 76 fiasco update involving the like what was it rancid toxic collectors merchandise like uh oh that was like absolute garbage production S- some overpriced piece of plastic and some overpriced collector's edition got people sick it was very bad that's what it sounds like when i don't know what the story is because it just happened while we were podcasting here on the dad and sons podcast um oh god D- D- liam do i have permission to use my keyboard here well i guess so all right so um d- yeah, as i was very eloquently saying fallout 76 now has a subscription bethesda has announced the premium membership is called fallout first what <laughs> <laughs> it's called the, pre- <laughs> the premium membership is called <laughs> fallout first wait it's, and it's- george george how much does it cost a month? It costs uh, eleven ninety nine per month, or you can get a twelve month subscription for one hundred. It's a twelve ninety nine. Uh, twelve ninety nine <laughs> and a year is a hundred. That's nuts. <laughs> That's like an, an MMO, an old school MMO model that that everyone fought hard for years in the wars to get rid of. Just, just, just let me. Just let me quote you. Let me quote your hammer on this. <laughs> Fallout First includes a raft of features players of the online only Fallout game have called for since launch, including private worlds, which means you can just play it single player <laughs> with mod support, oh, like no. all other Fallouts. A scrap box for unlimited junk storage, <laughs> which is the reason to to buy it. A much. survival tent, placeable fast travel points. Wow. A sleeping bag. Wow. And 1,650 atoms per month to use in the store. So A ranger outfit and exclusive icons and emotes. So, so uh, some gameplay features that sound engineered to make it a less hostile experience. Some cosmetics and some currency. I'm amazed. I'm amazed Bethesda I think this 
is <laughs> a thing. How is this game not free to play yet? Only the private owner, only the owner of a private world is required to be a Fallout first member. The Ranger armor outfit is lifted straight from the beloved Fallout New Vegas. Whoa. Oh, oh yeah, I see that. That's box art, man, in, in their promotional image. At first, I thought this was a bad Photoshop, actually, but that is the armor from Fallout New Vegas. While a private world lets you invite up to seven of your friends into the game, it also lets you play solo. So if you want to play the multiplayer focused Fallout 76 on your own, it'll cost you extra. Okay, um, I I guess now is the time for family discussion questions, uh, such as how long has it been since you have since you last remembered and needed to worry about an online game having a monthly like a traditional MMO style World of Warcraft fifteen dollar a month subscription. Well, considering I played Final Fantasy fourteen for three months yeah. of this year. Oh yeah, I yeah, that's that. that they're still doing that there, aren't they? So so yeah. it might not be as dead a model as, as I initially was giggling at that name, though. Yeah, family discussion question number two. What's with the name? Fallout first? I'm first sorry, is, what are we going to call Fallout 2 now? Fallout second? I don't know. Fallout first seems... I can't, I can't think of it. Because I see the member card, right? Like, that's got to mean something. Like, you're the first member, you're like... I, I don't know, part of some elite club, but what is the first thing? First in a presidential sense? Is that what they're getting at, or is that too yeah. much credit? I think maybe they're trying to just be a little bit witty, considering The Outer Worlds is out on Friday and has got really good reviews so and, far. And Fallout came first, first compared to that, so that's what Fallout they're calling their service. First. Wow. You guys are stretching. Maybe it's because when you pay this premium price, you were you were gonna you're gonna be among the first to experience Fallout's new content. So that makes you among Fallout's first players to see this new content. Um, it's amazing. It's it like doesn't amazing. roll off the tongue. Fallout first. You, hey, hey, hey! You got that new Fallout first? Hell yeah, baby! I love Fallout first. I play it every day on my Xbox One, the only entertainment center you'll ever need. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Poor Xbox. I love spending time in my private world. That costs me twelve ninety nine a month. Yeah, Could man. just play and Fallout up 3 to seven on New friends, Vegas. Though. Up to seven friends. But there are not seven people playing Fallout 76. But the question is, is Fallout 76... Actually, I reckon... I reckon subconsciously everybody's just ignored the fact that this probably does have quite a sizable player base i don't know it's fallout 76 you can never quite tell with fallout 76 these days it had a terrible launch and it seems to be having a terrible life but there are like (laughs) a vocal five percent crowd who do genuinely enjoy it and seem to Give it the benefit of the doubt. Is Fallout 76 not on Steam? Yeah, that was another big controversy. You had to have the Bethesda Fun Launcher. Oh. <laughs> oh, gee, oh, I'm know. typing in my keyboard. Yeah, Fallout 76 is not on Steam. Jesus. Everyone has a launcher. <laughs> God. In the last 24 hours, at least 15,000 people were playing Fallout 4. That's not bad. No, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. What a, do, do you have any stats on 76 over there? Well, do you think if Bethesda Fun Launcher is Bethesda's <laughs> own, they're going to let people know how many player counts? I guess not. Did I wonder if they ever publicly released numbers on 76. Because uh, that game, like, th- there were s- giveaways. That game cheapened the value of some console bundles, if I remember, during its launch period. It was, like, it was easy to get a hold of for cheap back back then, I said. That was, like, four or five months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, hang on. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find out some stats, but there doesn't seem to be anything apart from that... In its first six thousand, uh, in its first six days, it had twenty five thousand tracked players. That's not great for the first six days of a Fallout game. That is terrible. That's more or less. That can't be right. 
that's closer no, to what you just read for Fallout 4, like three years after launch in the past week. Wow. And that was last year. That was November of last year. Oh, no, that can't be right. I, a lot. 25,000. There, there is an article. There's an article from earlier this year that uh, claims that uh, Bethesda r- released in a PR thing. Well, like, yes, uh, Fallout 76 has millions of players. We have a huge millions of players and uh, have a large player base in this game. We are receiving tons of feedback. We aim to build a kind of Fallout platform. We have tons of ideas. It's been a crazy journey so far. <laughs> we are excited. There's a ton of cool content on the way. It's been an incredible experience. Like, it's just repeating very vague things that don't specify. How many millions? <laughs> Specifically, how many millions? I mean, I, I'm assuming that it's more than one million, because then there wouldn't be multiple millions, but from there on out, the sky's the limits. How many? How many? I would say, instead of Fallout uh, buying a Fallout 76 subscription go get a game pass and get yeah don't you rub this in you son of a bitch get and your friends get to the help outer you. wild outer worlds <laughs> get the outer worlds for free you son you well, know what free, kind of day i've had matt what what do you mean you i thought like i thought george dollar. bought you one yeah yeah maybe even two two george gave me two dollars <laughs> george gave me Two dollars, which I am very appreciative of. Thank you, George. George had to just to test if we could set up an Xbox Game Pass for PC for me being here in Japan. We had to get we had to actually buy what is it gift codes for one (laughs) dollar? Yes. From Microsoft. (laughs) But it would not work unless you live in America. It seems that. You can't have fucking Game Pass. So why and couldn't you set up another account? Infuriating. I set up four accounts. A proxy four. can't sign up for no. NordVPN. No, no, no. No, no. no. You I set realize. up an account, make it for you, and then send it to you, and then you download it. The problem is, is that the payment is registered no. to whatever card gets accepted to it, or whatever. Yeah, I, I put my card on it. I pay for it. I make the account over here. You just log into it over there and download the game. It's, you can't, it can't be... It can't be, Unless they're blocking you. Jeez, and, and then hacker man over here. Can you, play, can you play the game online then? Mm, like, I wh- mean, can you play it offline? Or does it always check when you open the, the oh. Xbox game app? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you would need a VPN or not. But for $1, I... We could keep. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it would check once it's once it's got the money for the thing. Is I couldn't get past the. You know what it's like when you sign up for subscriptions. It always wants to make sure that you have something tied to it so that it can automatically charge you next next month. Yeah. And I could not. It would not accept my British PayPal, my Japanese PayPal. It wouldn't accept my. Uh, Visa card, which is a Japanese issued one, but visas work around the world. It just wouldn't accept anything. So <sighs> maybe no sense. the it's next so thing stupid. we should try is is maybe making a uh, shareable Dad and Sons Xbox gamer tag. Yeah, we, and then we can have the sons play with us. That never happens, but okay. What should our, <laughs> what should our gamer tag be? Daddies. Da- <laughs> yeah, dad's Daddy. accounts. Daddy's dad's account. I honestly XXX69. spent six hours today trying to try to get us to work because I actually kind of want to play the Outer Worlds quite a bit. Yeah, for for a dollar, yes. For a dollar, <laughs> hell yeah. That's definitely worth a dollar. It doesn't look quite. I'd buy that great. for a dollar. <laughs> I don't know the other, but, but like, for a podcast hmm. full of like Beth Fallout fans, well, two out of three of us are Fallout no, no. fans. Wait, wait, who's not a Fallout fan? Liam, are you a Fallout fan? Yeah, I'm a huge Fallout fan. I love Fallout 3 and Fallout oh, okay. in Vegas. I'm like, I reviewed all the Fallouts, George. We play. should. Can can all three of us play it? I mean, At we're on different time? time zones, so we should we can work out a schedule. Well, we also have all of our own accounts. Uh the the Microsoft Xbox One all in one entertainment center game pass is something that Matt and I are already on. We just 
When did this meeting happen? Gears five. We've, yeah. You sons of a I've bitch. I've had it for a long time. You were yeah, I played Ori and and Hollow Knight <laughs> again for the third time. And didn't you I play it. Void Bastards? I played a little bit of it. Uh, not not too much. <laughs> well, no, Liam. I thought I thought you played. Oh, no, Void I Bastards. did, but not that. No, I bought it on Steam. Oh my god! This whole time I thought. Anyways, no. And this is uh, you gotta help a brother out. <laughs> See? I, I yeah yeah. After after this, I sent you two dollars last night. Tonight I might send you <laughs> my last one dollar, and and it'll uh, no. Don't be send a, me any dollars. dollars. Just 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 let's set up <laughs> a dad and son's $1. account. Let's get the one dollar of value transform into metaphorical represented in the account. <laughs> oh my god! Your last one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> George, I'm gonna send you a dollar. The last single, well, right? Patreon because dollar. I'm I'm gonna be sending multiple dollars for like any monthly payouts and sponsors. But these one dollar payments, I can be deducted a dollar from my podcast. You don't have to. Oh my god, it's only one dollar. We don't have to deduct <laughs> one dollar from anything. <laughs> I mean, technically, considering how how many times you've clacked on your keyboard and your mouse, you owe me and Matt five dollars each. Well, then it just balances out if I spend three dollars on, <laughs> on getting us access to the silly game. It's really important that we all play silly games and talk about whether or not they're it would good, be, right? It would be pretty good if we could play it, and then Matt can shit on it. Yeah, I probably like, will. Yeah, you know. It does not look too good. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you know, I'm pretty remember, sure it'll be fine. Aren't that big of a studio. I mean, they're pretty big, but they're not like Bethesda big. A Bethesda can't make a fucking open world game without massive bugs, which supposedly the outer world isn't that bad at. Now, now yeah. that the game's actually out, I am I am more ready to trust review numbers than I am anything visual. And Outer Worlds has some pretty okay ones. Um, Met Metacritic's eighty two. Oh, I do wish it was higher than eighty two, but it's got an eighty two on Metacritic so far. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. It'll print new it'll IP and everything. It'll take me an hour to get used to you know old school animations. Like the mouth are just opening and closing. Like being stretched. That's yeah, so weird. The, the to body me. perfectly still, but the mouth yeah, all animated. Just weird looking. So weird looking. But I'll get it, used to it. Yeah, if you just like close your eyes and imagine that everyone's wearing an invisible straight jacket, it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Um so there's one more silly little news story that uh happened after this week's China fiasco. Which also <laughs> happens like Two hours ago. But instead, we're going to talk about Suda51 and Swery collaborating on a on a indie horror game they kind of threw together during a live-streamed interview. Amazing. So during an IGN Japan live-stream on October 23rd, um, <laughs> Suda and Swery were, were up on a panel together and solidified ideas on the spot that they had apparently been working on since 2018. Apparently, they already also know that they have a million dollars minimum to work with from Devolver Digital. <laughs> and so Devolver they, had no idea. <laughs> so they just kind of like <laughs> tossed some ideas out on air until a few of them stuck and then texted a guy for approval and got a yes on air on the spot. Um, no, 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 no. So, so let's give you some context. They bulged out would just like let's film a live stream of our <laughs> secret project and that'll get people to watch yet they had n not really any structural ideas and they just turned up and started talking about suggestions from the audience <laughs> and started building a game and then uh they wanted it to be like a horror game inspired by the like the ps2 ps3 uh series siren yeah, and, and we should we should also mention this totally didn't just come up out of the blue on this event. It, it has, according to to the, the Gimatsu.com news, in 2008, the pair decided to make a game together, but would forget the ideas they discussed after getting drunk. Yes, which Sweary does quite frequently. The, the drinking himself. Yeah, the drinking himself. But basically, they uh, made, found out they wanted to make a horror game. They texted the guy who made siren and was like we want you to help with this make a decision right now so they texted, texted him on the live, stream. the live stream and he was like yes and they all they also just were like yeah devolver are gonna publish this and they're gonna <laughs> give us one million dollars and everybody took it as like an announcement but actually <laughs> yeah. devolver had no idea and devolver on twitter were like 
Huh. Okay, well, pitch is the game then. <laughs> wow. And they also uh, call, they also uh, were like, yeah, uh, Yukio, who did the music for Minute. Mm -hmm. They were like, yeah, Yukio is signed on to do the music for the game. <laughs> so, look and forward. Yukio was like, Yukio was like, ah, did I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look <laughs> forward to what? Hotel Barcelona, made by Suda51 and Swery, music by Yokio, and, and they're also getting Siren creator Keichiro Toyama on board some uh, published without, by Devolver. Without any pre-planning. I Presumably, if they actually go through with it at some point within the next two, three, maybe four years... Probably too. Hobbled years, together live on stream within hours before we recorded this thing. We hobbled together. Actually, yeah, that live stream seems a lot like our podcast episodes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mistakes no. into miracles. Oh, we I like that. We people in ten minutes before. We source all of our our material from the audience. And and we're throwing them all together into the pot and making a. We big cost a million dollars an episode. <laughs> and Devolver publishes this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine like a No More Heroes horror game? Like I can't, I can't see that being good. I can't. Kind, kind of su suited. Tickled Wait, suited that, made Killer Seven. That, Killer that, that Killer, he made the silver case. Oh, so what could was the one with the big game. boner gun? It was like a horror comedy theme. Shadow Shadows, Sh Shadows of the Damned. That was Damned. awesome. That was oh, a that, that was a that really fun game. That's sweary. Sweary. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that they made a horror game. Okay, so maybe it would look okay. So it's just gonna be a goofy Japanese game. Basically. Yes, uh, like the most Japanese game that could be made in twenty. 20 or whatever they they mention how they actually want to make it light and easy to play portable for mobile switch stadia so yet yeah, probably quirky point and click adventure type stuff oh no oh, no more point and click. <laughs> wait japan doesn't really make point and click games i doubt, I doubt well, that they make adventure games stuff like they make uh, visual novels phantom tricks yeah adventure game visual the lines are blurry I, the semantics are my favorite thing R to talk really about point podcast. and click games that's that's that disco stuff man <laughs> <laughs> matt you used to like point and click adventure games have i what game have i played george that was point and click on the tovg podcast you would talk about point and click adventure games with weird hr geiger artwork i don't remember the name but i remember what they looked like and you definitely I point and clicked and had an adventure. I don't think I've <laughs> ever finished a point and click game. Well, I don't I have the finished it. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've played one like that. <laughs> ever. Like what was it? Broken? Maybe it was hidden puzzle. I think that was the Broken the Age. Term you used. Broken Age. Yeah, I like looked at it. Nah. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 I guess The Walking Dead was considered Oh, that? God. yeah, that was a point and click game. I get, okay. yeah, technically, technically, that technically is doing a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. So for all the people out there who have looked at all the podcasts in the world and, and reviewed their choices and decided to not say nah when coming to this one, we've got, <laughs> we've got a handful of questions from, from our listeners which uh, round about Jesus. this time of year, been a couple months. Could use some some refreshing if you have any any questions, comments, or suggestions, but preferably questions. <laughs> Please send them to Dad and Sons Podcast at gmail .com. Every week we read at least two, and uh, this time I <laughs> was expecting us to need more than we ended up. But <laughs> anyways, I got more for. For next week we're probably not enough for like two weeks after that so anyways if you could send them some new ones that would be great first one for this week is coming in from oscar oscar says well first of all for for context i think i should preface the following um, um question with uh with with the statement that oscar is is a child graduating on their way out into the world oh. relatively soon i'm going to have to decide on which college or university i'd like to attend for the next school year the problem is i'm greatly intimidated uncertainty of what i want to do and how things will work out practically are my biggest concerns 
Do any of you curriculum hardened, pencil pushing, glasses adjusting mentors have any advice for the <laughs> sprouts in the audience when it comes to attending higher education? Anything you wish to have known after graduating high school yourself? I'd love to hear them if you do. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Yo, that's the exact opposite of what I was gonna say. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about college. So much. Like, don't worry about it in the the how does this, how to describe life changes so much in such a short period of time. Yes, it I know does. what like you, you mean, but it's also really important to make sure you get at least the college that you want. Or, or yeah, like the a thing good is, backup. you're putting you're putting pressure on yourself that that will be the defining thing about you for like the next however long, right? Yeah, depending on the type of person. It might. But three, if you go to college for three years, say, and then three years after that, you're going to be an entirely different person. Where college is your recent history, but you've moved on and all that kind of stuff. I feel like if I could tell myself. When I was like getting ready to go to university or what I was doing, you know, I worried all the time about what it is I wanted to do, what I wanted to have a job in. And I didn't know at the time that I wanted to make games and all that kind of stuff. And I have been on a weird wobbly path up and down in so many different avenues since then that you should not worry as much as you th you think you have to. You will change as a person, you will grow, and these experiences, whether good or bad, will do you in good stead, I think. And you will be the person who you are meant to be through the growth of this. And I wish I could just tell myself, would be like, just chill out. And just enjoy it more. I agree. I guess I'm just... I. I, I guess I'm just not going to surprise anyone by saying I have a fear of chilling out too much. Yeah, don't don't yeah. not do the work, because like I'm real neurotic. What what were you, what were you worried about though? Be honest. What were you worried about when you were gonna go to high school or college? Were you actually worried about like the classes, like the work, yeah, or were you worried I, about normal like young adult things? People, more of the classes, and situations, the, definitely not like as that. much that when I. When I was 16 and 17 years old, I was a nervous wreck and probably actually more overworked and stressed out than I probably have been the rest of my entire life. That stuff that you got to know is probably going to get better. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to entirely cast aside these decisions and throw luck to the wind. Like you're about to invest no, multiple years of your life on something that you want to do for multiple years afterwards. And that's but that's you a lot became of a YouTuber. Yeah, it didn't. So, OK, I wanted to um, be a journalist and I wish that I had taken more computer courses so that I could gain more of an expertise on the thing that I would be journalizing about. And that's something that I think is uh, good advice for anyone who wants to get into writing is to make sure to take courses on the thing that you're specializing in as as your topical your your topic choices. But at the same time, there's no reason whatsoever you should probably worry about like your grades. It's it's more about the work you do than the grades you get either in high school or college. And in high school, it's more about your placement than than the grades, which still depends on your grades, but. You you definitely have to put the work in. You get out of it what you put in. It's hard not to know whether or not you're sweating the small stuff because you won't know what the small stuff is until later, I guess, is how I feel about my retrospective experience. Like, I'm glad that I stressed out and worried about the SATs and ACTs as much as I did. Did you have standardized tests? Those those were a big deal. Yeah. We had different FK. forms of that kind of stuff. We had what was called the GCSEs. You get the GCSEs. What what are they like? They were, you know, basically the huge end of high school tests mm -hmm. before college. Yeah. That you have to take in your final year. And they were nerve wracking and they were scary. Yeah. I, I believe with the SATs, you can fail, but that's what colleges look at. So yeah. you're going to graduate so high school, to. but you're probably yeah. not going to go to college. Yeah. And yeah. <sighs> I don't even know if, like, college choice... Okay, like, at least make I sure think, that I you're invested in a good I think we're adding more pressure backup. by talking about... But it's so fucking true. Our kids are pressured so much more than a lot of other people of, of 
certain ages and demographics and responsibilities. Like, remember homework? Yeah, yes. be because, I mean, that's the world now. You have to go to college or you won't get a job. But then after 18 to 22 years of doing homework and paperwork, like, once you get the job, you don't do homework anymore. I don't know. Unless you're a teacher, it doesn't work with, with all job descriptions, of course. But most of them are probably not going to send you home with, with pages of homework like school does. I don't think that's really of any relation or issue to He's his going question. deep. He's going deep. I, well, I, yeah, I, I, I would say, Oscar, dude, like, just do it. There's going to be a lot of situations in life yeah. where you're – basically to piggyback off of uh, Liam, it, you're just going to be a lot of situations in, in life that you're, you're not going to want to do something, but you got to mm -hmm. do it. And just, just, just go through it and just You'll like, be all the better for it. Yeah, you will. And, you know, you're going, you're not even who you are yet. You know, <laughs> you're not even who <laughs> you are. Like, we. it's weird like, to, to hear that. And yeah. I didn't know that when I was young. Yeah. You don't 100%. know. You think, you know, you think you're, you think you're self-aware. But Facebook once you hit memories like memories is yeah. the weirdest, worst time capsule ever. You read old posts by yourself during that time in your yeah. life, like university. And you're like, who the fuck is this dick? You know, yeah. like, oh, I really, I don't think that like my, my advice is that far off. I'm just having a very hard time saying it. And and this is it. I want to say. You're saying it in a very George way. I am. And, and I just want to say branch out, like experiment with different specialties to find out what you're into and what you actually want to be doing, because that's how you'll figure out. Don't do something you don't like. Don't do it. If, yeah. if you even have suspicions that it's something you don't like, you got to make sure do before it. you commit to yeah. it. Just don't do it. And even if you do commit to it and you spend a year and you're like, fuck, I can't do this. Change. Don't and do don't stick to it. that year you spent either. That just means that yeah. you were making sure. Yeah. yeah, you were smarter than the idiot who stayed in something they didn't like for four years. And yeah. you had to do five. Like, m just... If you're not enjoying it, move on and find something you're interested in because there'll be something else. And it is hard to have the choice. It took me many, many years of many different things before I found out what it is I wanted to do. And, you know, that was late. You can just keep trying and keep experimenting. But yeah, like Matt said, you're going to go through situations you don't like. Everybody has to. But going to university or going to college is one of my fondest memories. I learned so much. University, I still, like, I'm nostalgic for all the time. There is a lot to be said about how much the degree is worth these days in the job market, but at the same time, the value of the education is something that is, like, priceless. Like, having to put yourself in a situation where you're forced to interact with other people and live on your own very, very quickly is 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 more what you're paying for than your income potential for the degree you're getting. Yeah, it really depends on the type of person you are. If you're somebody like me who's very uh self-independent and you are you thrive better when you're able to be in control of your own independence, you're going to love college and university. If you're a bit more, you know, family orientated and like leaving your family and stuff, that's going to be tough, but, you know, you'll find more about yourself that you've not yet found. And that's just as important as the major you choose in the classes that you take is like figuring out Absolutely. how well you can handle yourself by yourself. Choose happiness over money. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, my God. Yes, please, please, please do, it. do that. Please, please do, do that. Because please. then you're going to be later in life and you're going to be like, fuck <laughs> you're gonna be like fuck you're gonna move you might move up in the company and everything and then you just be unhappy yeah please so. please if my stories about living in japan with the salary men who are miserable or whatever ever taught you anything don't do stuff for money yeah. you will complain about not having money all the time me and matt do constantly yeah. i have a friend who what turned down tesla to work at a smaller company because yeah he did he just he didn't like the work so just yeah be happy uh, don't worry yeah i 
<laughs> I could talk about that subject forever. Yeah. <laughs> I have done a lot of thinking about yes. that kind of thing. <laughs> but I keep it short. <laughs> I have a lot of asterisk marks, but we don't have a lot of time. Um, yeah, we don't. <laughs> next questions from Castell. I'm a little bit of an amateur automotive gearhead, and I'm curious as to your personal histories relating to cars. Uh, do hmm. you guys at least know how to drive, and what do you think of it? Do any of you know how to drive stick? Do you have any kind of dream car, or maybe a favorite manufacturer? Fun nostalgia for an older car based on its place in pop culture, like the DeLorean. I'm. Um, my friend was in the cars, so I just kind of you know, piggybacked off of him, but like, I don't know much about cars, but I do like a comfortable ride with good speakers. And yeah. like that, that is number one. Cause I love music. Good podcast. I never talk about it on the podcast, but I love music. Nothing like setting out for a long road trip with your dads and sons. Yes. Absolutely. yes that's my favorite thing to do in a car, which is it, one it of my be favorite everybody's things to favorite do things in to do. life is just listen to the dad and sons podcast. I I have like a, a a Kia Optima and it's like so it's so um selfish because everything is turned towards me um in the driver's mm, seat the command center <laughs> <laughs> and so I love it <laughs> I love it but every time I have company in the other seat it's, it's like <laughs> they get like nothing <laughs> <laughs> just a smooth ride and um I've gotten comfortable with the heated seats and the heated steering wheel. I'm not going to lie. I'm heated gonna steering lie. wheel? Yes, dude. Keep your hands warm. Keep your I hands know it's warm such a... It's such a point the vents in your fingers. Can oh, I my God, no. Steering wheel for that? Okay. You don't have... If you don't have, like, a car that is able to dethor itself, it can be pretty rough. I guess I just yeah. don't know. It's like the bidet. I, I won't know until I try. It's, <laughs> well, it's funny, actually, because... I had a driving license for what God, nearly thirteen years now, and I've always driven. When I was in the UK, I drove all the time. I had a car since I passed my test. I then, when I moved to Japan for the first like three years, up until I moved to Kyoto, I had a car. This is the first year where I've not had a car since I passed my test, and it's I rough, miss it, isn't it? It's not, it's, but it's nothing to do with transport because Japan is amazing and it's cheaper and it's great. You don't have to worry about insurance. You don't have to worry about your car being fixed. But I miss driving. I'm definitely one of those people who loves driving. Like, it's God. just so enjoyable I am, to me. I am the opposite of both of you people and yeah. probably most people. <laughs> Guess what? I don't like driving in cities, though. I hate driving in cities. Yeah, I, whether it's in cities or in countryside, I am a neurotic oh, I mess. Countryside. Oh, it's so good. I, I, I like the countryside music. better, but Open I still, air. like, I'm always worried about crashing. I'm always worried about the cops. And I'm I'm always worried about the other drivers running into me. Like, it, I feel like that's, there's so much that could go wrong that I just can't get them out of my brain. And I can't relax when I'm driving. You get used to it. Like, you get yeah. really used to knowing how much space yeah absolutely like yeah. car it's it's so weird how you can sit not in the middle of a car but very much on 50 percent of one mm. side of it yeah and yeah. still have the spatial I, awareness I, of the size of your vehicle I, I, one of the reasons why that feels weird is because you don't get that feeling in video games <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean in most things right you don't you people can sneak up on you and stuff and you still don't you like, notice like there, them and stuff, there, but there when you're a in a car, of of bodily synergy that that you don't get with a game controller that you get with a car, like you feel the weight jostling around. Yeah, because of that, I have actually never felt nervous. I don't think ever. Oh, really? About crashing or other people hitting me or mm. anything like that. I'm I'm one of those very, mm. and I've never crashed my car, mm. but I've lucky never yeah, felt. Either. In danger. I've never felt in danger driving. 
What about the cops? What are the cops in Japan like when it comes to, to driving? I mean, I've been pulled over for speeding three times, so Damn. that'll tell you what Japanese cops are like. I, I live downtown. I've always lived in a downtown where I don't need a car, and I've never gotten a car, and I usually ride a bike everywhere, and cars are fast and scary for me. However, <laughs> a, a few months ago, I had to rent a car and drive all across the state to see some family members, and during the, like, one week period where i was having to do a lot of driving i got pulled over twice wow. the only two times in my life i've ever been pulled over happened within a month of each other last year during the holiday season yep and that's, that's like the, the worst thing pulled for over. george <laughs> that's a curse right <laughs> you're scared wait wait why were why were you pulled over uh for speeding in the first <laughs> case and for a bad turn in the second case a bad turn <laughs> yeah bad turn there was uh, no right on reds and i missed the sign i didn't see it you, did you tell me you haven't driven in like years no i just said yes no officer bye i didn't want to say any words that i ha didn't have to i george you're not black you won't get shot literally argue with him be like yo i haven't been uh, you know i haven't touched a steering wheel in a while you know well maybe like, i still need to like you know know what it, the suffering is like so i can better understand <laughs> oh my no God. you don't you don't you know i'm i likely don't get pulled over and i i drive a gentle 10 miles over the speed limit everywhere <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised you don't have the paranoia either after the shit you went through with the, yeah, the I, southern cops you know you know i i'm gonna live my life regardless <laughs> you know I, I can't i can't live in fear even though when it does happen i'm probably gonna be like all right time to put on the jazz music you know <laughs> And you know, put on the white voice. Is <laughs> just like, yeah, how you doing, officer? Why, hello there, officer. Well, hello how are you doing there. Today? <laughs> how are you doing on this evening? Um. Oh, okay. No, no. Before you move on, I don't drive stick. Oh, you guys that's drive right. stick? We got We got. I I actually do know how to drive stick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My wow. my dad had a truck that that had stick, so I learned how to drive stick. Nobody in the UK drives automatic. Everybody drives stick. Really? Um, favorite car? Yeah. For, well, 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 dream car. This is a dream, dream car. I have a favorite car. I don't have a dream car because I don't know enough about cars to have a dream car. I would actually really, really like a Tesla. Yes. I am there with you. I There's something about it. It's the... Uh, yeah. It, it's space age sci-fi in a car. Like, yeah. The, there's just nothing the, else like them. Just the, the, the big um tablet in the middle yeah um yeah it's just Giant everything is simple in your front dashboard oh oh self-driving so you don't gotta worry about that C can you can you imagine no oil changes can you imagine none of that, that would Bulls, be amazing none of that done it's and all it, like, done the, like everything being told at you that you know, hey, you should maybe just pump up your right tire because it's this da 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 pressure. You don't have to do any of that shit. Yeah. Although yeah. I do have a question for George. George. Yeah. yeah. What would you trust more, the self-driving robot car or your own driving? Absolutely, positively, the self-driving robot. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a lot more comfortable. Well, yeah, I was just thinking when you said Tesla. Take like, me, science. Mind. I know what science, my dream car is. Science, take the wheel. And that's it. That my dream car is something that I requires such little work to the point where I don't even want to. I don't see the thing. If the self driving car messes up and kills a baby, I want to blame that on the car, not me. I oh my can't. I can't get out of baby? that. Baby. Yeah, yeah. If if there's a baby in the road and and I can't see it, I'd rather the car make that mistake than me. I I I have a coworker that has a Tesla and I. I was like, oh, no, call hell? up, call up, call up. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I got you. And then uh, he calls it in the parking lot, you know, to come to him. <gasps> and it just had no so much trouble. 
I had so much trouble getting out. It was like almost hitting a car. And I was like, okay, you know what? Just, nah, I'm good. I'm good. It just kept going back and forth. I was like, no, just don't don't worry about it. It eventually came. You guys ever fill out the Google self-driving car capture boxes? And it's like, mark the spots with the crosswalk. And, and even you were like too fast to make sure you get it right. So you're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have, have pressed that sidewalk button. That's going to kill someone. <laughs> no, I what? what oh, is, oh, is that, that, <laughs> and I you think, know, well, and you, with that, we've sounded the death note of this episode. God damn! You, when you fill out the capture boxes, everyone's doing it. Everyone's done it. It's basic internet.